there's a lot to cover, so I'm going to just jump right in. There are two ways to solve an integral. The first is the fundamental theorem of calculus. This doesn't apply here because we don't have a proper equation. The second way to do it is the area under the curve. And notice I said under the curve. You have to remember that integrals can be negative, and the integrals will be negative if the graph is underneath the x-axis here. So, the insert, we'll, we'll, we'll start with a of 1. a of 1 is equal to the integral from 0 to 1, right? Now, we can't actually solve this using regular methods, but what we can do is look at the graph here, and I think this is what it was trying to teach you to do, and look at the area between the point of um, the graph from x equals 0 and x equals 1. And as you can see, this makes a rectangle very straightforward to uh, calculate the area of this, but you do have to remember the height being negative 2 does mean that we put in a negative 2. And then it's just multiplied by a base of 1. In other words, a of 1 is equal to negative 2 through geometry area under the curve. When we do a of 2, that means the integral is going to go from 0 to 2. Next, we're going to add the area under the curve from 0 to 2, and the way we do this is we separate it into easy geometric fig figures here, and then we add them together. So it's going to be negative 2 plus, this is the area of the rectangle. This rectangle here has a height of 2, a base of 1, and then it's the area of the triangle below it, which is a height of 2, because we go from negative 4 to negative 2. So the triangle has a height of negative 2. A base of 1, and you multiply by 1 half, because that's the formula for the area of a triangle. So when we add that all together, we get that the uh, area under the curve from z in other words, a of 2 equals negative 5. Um, it would take a long time to go through all of this, so give me a comment if that doesn't make any sense and I can explain it more thoroughly or whatever. Um, but for now, we're going to move on to the next step. So it's asking the intervals of which A of X is increasing, decreasing, min, max, all that stuff. What we have to do here is we have to take the derivative of A of X. Now, if you don't know, when we take the derivative, of the integral from 0 to x of f of t, we get f of x. I can link you to somewhere that explains that, but that's a fundamental rule of calculus. So don't be discouraged by this being x here and the variable here being t. Because of how the equation is set up, we can basically put in a x value of like 3, and it's equivalent to the, or here, let me just write it like this, f of 3, when we put it in as x, is equivalent to f of 3 when we put it in as t. I think that uh, should be clear. In other words, what we're going to do is we're going to look for where a prime of x is equal to 0. This is how we discover where a of x is increasing or decreasing. So a prime of x is equal to 0 means f of x equals 0. Well, we have this lovely graph right here that we just made. And we see that at x equals 3, that is true. At x equals 7, that is true. And at x equals 8, that is true. We're now going to plot it on a number line here. This is the number line for a prime of x on the bounds of 0, since that's the uh, lower bound, and the bounds of 8, since that is the upper bound. So we don't care about 8 here, since that's already an upper bound. And we have 7 here. So now what we have to do is we have to determine um, whether a prime of x is positive or negative from 0 to 3, and whether a prime of x is positive or negative from 3 to 7, positive or negative from 7 to 8. Well, we just look at f of x. From 0 to 3, f of x is less than 0, which makes this negative. From 3 to 7, f of x is greater than 0. From 7 to 8, this is actually uh, just 0, which would mean decreasing here, 0 to 3, increasing here. Um, that's all the time I have. If you have any questions or you want to message me, feel free, and I'd be happy to explain this in more detail.